Hello. In this session, I will be discussing how to investigate an incident. In particular, I will be going through an overview of the causality view and timeline view within Cortex XDR. Both provide a unique way to analyze and respond to events. The causality view in particular analyzes an alert in the scope of the causality instance, which is what the alert pertains to. This includes the presented alert along with the entire process execution chain that led to the alert, giving insightful information for each node prior. The timeline view provides a forensic timeline of the sequence of events, alerts, informational biox, and correlation rules involved in an attack. To begin with the causality view, this can be initiated by going to Incident Response, Incidents, selecting any given incident in the list, going over to the Alerts and Insights tab on the incident, and then right-clicking on the alert you would like to open the causality view of, and then select Causality View. This can also be done by viewing individual alerts in the Alerts table at the top right. In the context of the particular incident we'll be looking into, it will be a ransomware attack initiated by the means of a phishing attack. The compromised user in this case entered credentials into a malicious website, which were then given to a threat actor who then installed ransomware onto the endpoint. When looking into the causality view of an alert, we are given an origin of how the original alert came to be. This is built with process nodes and executions and events. From this screenshot, we can tell that the alert we are viewing is this BIOC that was triggered at the end with this VSS admin executable because it's the youngest node in the chain. The causality group owner, distinguished by the CGO tag on the node, identifies the process responsible for all other nodes on the chain. In terms of the view of the causality view from the CGO, the causality view is, up, is able to display up to nine process branches that reveal alerts related to the event. From the CGO, the user is able to reveal the parent or child in the right-click menu as well to expand upon the timeline if that particular node has any parent or child processes as well. To navigate the causality view, the user can click and drag across the screen, click on the zoom buttons at the top right, and also click on the bottom right target as well in order to return the center back onto the causality view. The process nodes display icons to indicate when an RPC protocol or code injection event were executed on another process from either a local or remote host. The injection icon or arrows on newer versions of Cortex XCR represent the injected node, and the cloud icon represents the remote IP address. There are also additional visual indicators on nodes that can give insightful information to the viewer as well. The red right outline on a node represents a process that selects is malicious. As we can see, the selected node has a wildfire verdict of malware. And processes with a blue outline are flagged as benign by wildfire. Triangles above nodes are also significant, representing the source of the alerts. A triangle with a B represents an alert that is a BIOC. And a triangle with an exclamation mark or on newer versions of Cortex XDR a lowercase i, represent an IOC alert. There's also a lot of helpful information that we can see on the bottom of the screen as well, above the events, which I will get to in just a moment. But it's important to note the autofocus tags to the right. Here, we are given a good indication of the threat we are dealing with, along with its capabilities. With this attack in particular, we have a good indication that it's utilizing the Tesla Crypt ransomware, as we can see in the middle, and is also utilizing techniques such as process injection, and deleting volume snapshots. On the bottom of the page, we're able to view up to 100,000 related alerts for process node, which matches the alert criteria that were not triggered, but are informational. To the right of the informational chart at the bottom, we're also able to see this button in the middle, which is the view in XQL button. This allows the population of an event in an XQL search query, which can be refined upon if needed. This can also be applied to any individual row as well by right-clicking and selecting on XQL search. There is additional information that the user can retrieve about a process by hovering over a particular node, which is similar to what we saw on the bottom here. On the hover, we can see the path, command line, dot two fifty six, username, signature, wildfire verdict, and running time of the process. The analytics profiles on the bottom also show additional correlations regarding the specified process. 
The right-click menu also gives users several options to initiate upon the node process as well, such as investigating it, investigating it in the timeline, adding to the allower block list, searching for the file on all endpoints, permitting quarantining, along with providing additional remediation suggestions, and finally, being able to open it in virus total, hash review, and quick launcher. Alternatively, at the top right of the causality view under the actions button, additional remediation actions can be initiated if necessary. If we click on the timeline view in the causality view right click menu or open it up from an alert, we will be prompted with the timeline view pane seen here. It is important to note that the user will only have the option to open the timeline if EDR data is available for the incident, which requires a pro license. While the causality view shows events and processes marked as important, the timeline view displays all this information in a forensic timeline. The timeline is primarily composed of four parts. First, the causality group owner and the host, which it ran on in the top left. The endpoint name is listed in the blue and the process is listed right under it. The blue corner to the bottom right of the box expands the listed processes and events or alerts associated with the process in the timeline. Next, we have the time span display at the top. By default, the timeline view begins looking at all the events from the start to the end. This can be adjusted at the settings at the top or by dragging on the timeline view and highlighting on the timeline for a particular event to zoom in on. So right now it's going by the day from the beginning of the first informational event to the last. And I can go to seven day or one month and see all the information listed there. I can also highlight a particular subsection of the timeline to zoom in on for further analysis. We also have the activity listed on the actual timeline. At the top here, we have the correlation rules, which can give additional information if we hover over it. We also have the event information below. Event types can include process execution, incoming slash outgoing connections, failed connections, data uploads, and data downloads. Colors to the left will depict the level of severity, being red, yellow, blue, and gray from most to least severe. Finally, we have the related events and alerts and informational biocs that appear when clicking on any individual node at the timeline. Since this IOC at the top is individual, it will show only one piece of information regarding it. And if we select a outgoing connection alert over here, you can see all of the existing actions that relate to that outgoing connection. Here we can see a lot of useful information on the outgoing connection we selected, such as the username, who it was initiated by, the action type, the process and thread IDs of the parents, and finally, a description of the alert. If we click on this little button to the left of the source, we can see additional information about the event as well. In this session, we discussed how to investigate an incident slash alert through the causality and timeline view within Cortex XDR. We went through a deep dive into the features of both of the views, such as the many visual indicators, navigations, and demonstrations of potential information that can be seen by both. For more information, please refer to the reference documentation for Cortex XDR. Thank you, and have a great day.